Thank you, Chess, for your kind introduction, and thank you, AWS, for giving me the opportunity to be with you today. We created Babylon some five years ago with a simple aim, with a simple mission to make healthcare accessible and affordable and put it in the hands of every human being on Earth. I'm a physicist, not a very good one, uh, but one thing I learned in physics is that if you dissect every problem into its constituent components, they are easier to solve. So if you look at that statement, to make healthcare affordable nowadays is a lot simpler. As long as we can deliver most of the healthcare most people need on the devices they already have, that will make it much more accessible than what it used to be in the past when people had to travel from their villages, towns, cities, on the buses, on the cars, into the doctors, uh, surgeries and clinics to be seen. Um, in Rwanda today, we deliver healthcare to the entire population where the government has made digital first primary care universally available to the most remote villages, to the center of the Kigali, to the towns, to the cities in one of the financially poorest countries in the world. We do the same in UK, one of the richest countries in the world, in Canada, in United States. However, there is no accessibility without affordability. And to make healthcare affordable, we need to understand where the real costs are. If you cut the cost in one way, 70% to all the costs sits in predictable, preventable diseases. Diseases that if we catch them early, a $10 problem does not become a $1,000 solution. If you cut it another way, two thirds of all the costs in healthcare sit in salaries. Doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals are among the rarest and it's relatively the most expensive assets of each country. So what we do in Babylon is on one hand, monitor, observe, take insights from the behavior of our members so that we can see their issues before they develop to help them to stay healthier. And on the other hand, when they do run into problem, uh, problems, we automate as much as possible that our doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals have to do so that they can uh, focus on the top of their license. Most people, as you know, in healthcare do not do that. And as a result of that, what we have is a society in which all the $10 trillion sector that we have, money that we spend in healthcare, is spent on 50% of the world population. According to the World Health Organization, 50%, half of the humanity has no access to the most basic healthcare services. Five out of the seven billion people have no access to secondary care, cannot dream of a surgery when things go wrong. Einstein used to say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. We now have an opportunity after COVID-19 to reassess the way we've been doing things and do things in a very different way. We lost far too much as a society to even contemplate to go back to our old ways. I myself lost my father, my most wonderful friend to this dreadful disease. It is a betrayal of the price we pay if we go back to do things the way we used to do them rather than to look at things from new. COVID-19 forced us to start looking at the way we deliver healthcare in a fundamentally different way. What the system saw was that as soon as the pressure on the system grew, almost the entire functionality of the system at the beginning came to a halt, forcing everybody to rethink the way they've been delivering healthcare. So what we did in Babylon, for instance, was to deploy our technology and our capability and everything we have learned in the last five years to be able to deliver a very different model, which is today adapted by 8% of the population of UK, for instance, where we help some of our most in need communities to look after their uh, population. We managed to do so by dissecting the needs of the people into the categories and then serving each of those needs according to the most appropriate and simplest way for them to get satisfied. So first, for those who just wanted information or if they had symptoms and they wanted to decide if they need to isolate themselves, 
or when they isolated themselves, they needed to monitor themselves. We created a digital layer that enabled them to do all of the above. And the cost of the delivery of that, as you will know, with digital is very little. It's about 50 cents, say, per delivery. For those who wanted to talk to a human being, we looked at the kind of questions people have and managed to train a whole set of professionals that we could put up on live chats to support COVID-19 uh, 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 suspect patients or those who were uh, in isolation, but we do so with um, under the supervision of clinicians and uh, healthcare professionals. The cost of delivery of that was $5. One in five times, only in 20% of our patients, we connected them for video consultations with our doctors. And that way we managed to protect the most in need resource that we all have. So while we quadrupled in Babylon the number of patients we had and the number of interactions we had with our patients, and like most others, we didn't have to go and scramble to find more doctors. We could do so almost with the existing population of our doctors that we had. Only one in 10 times our monitor our uh, telemedicine uh, services led to a referral to a clinic where the cost will, of course, as you know, bump up from, say, $50 in interaction to $500. And in very rare occasions, we had to admit patients into hospitals where the cost can be in thousands of dollars. That very disciplined funnel managed to achieve a number of things. One, Patient satisfaction remained huge. 93% net promoter score. Patients loved the fact that they had something, someone available to them 24 seven, but they were not calling on the uh, highest in demand resources of the uh, country. Secondly, the cost for the whole system was managed in very well without any undue pressure on the system. And thirdly, we managed to keep our doctors uh, and safeguard their time so that they could see uh, the most in need patients that Babylon had. That system worked, but COVID-19 is not the only crisis we face in healthcare. For years, as you all know, we've been facing the crisis of chronic conditions. We've been facing with the pandemic of mental health. Every year, for the last decade, a million wonderful human beings committed suicide, took their own lives. We almost, as societies, took a blind, turned a blind eye to that disaster, that crisis that is facing our societies. It is not time to look at what we learn and redeploy the models of healthcare that have worked well for COVID-19 to deal with other chronic conditions that we have been suffering from all the time, from mental health, to chronic uh, conditions like diabetes and uh, COPD. It is time to change the way we've been delivering healthcare. It is possible to do so thanks to organizations like AWS for making cloud so widely available, to mobile networks, to the technology companies out there who have provided so much of the infrastructure we need. It is time to look at healthcare in a fresh way. We all paid far too high a price to go back to the way we were doing things. It is time to do it new. Charles, thank you so much for the opportunity you gave me to talk to uh, the people in this audience, and I'll send it. I'll send it back to you now.